announcements before we get started with today's worship service. The Pastor's Aid Ministry needs you. If you would like to join the Pastor's Aid Ministry or learn how you can help, please see Sister Phyllis Williams after the morning service today in the sanctuary. During this season of Lent, please join us with your participation in the Daniel Fast for 21 days, Monday through Saturday until April 7th. On Saturday, April 1st at 9 a.m., the LUBC Women's Fellowship will host Christ in the Passover, an interactive experience. Sign-up sheets are in the foyer. The Drama Ministry will be presenting Easter Colors of Hope following the morning service on April 2nd. If you would like to volunteer, please contact a member of the Drama Ministry. LUBC will have a Good Friday service on April 7th in the sanctuary at 7 p.m. Dr. Vernon C. Walton, Senior Pastor of the First Baptist Church of Vienna, will be our guest preacher. LUBC Spring Revival will be on Monday, April 17th through Tuesday, April 18th at 7 p.m. in the sanctuary. Reverend Kim Y. Neal will be our guest preacher. And as always, Little Union, please join us every Monday at 7 a.m. for the 7 at 7 prayer call, as well as Bible study every Wednesday at 12 p.m. and Sunday school every Wednesday at 7 p.m via Zoom and Facebook Live. Okay, Little Union, the worship service will begin shortly. Thank you for your time and enjoy the service. Testing, testing, testing.
morning. Amen. This is another day that the Lord has made. I'm so glad. Yes, sir. He has blessed us to see another day that we've never seen before. Amen. amen. I'm grateful, amen, that God has woke us up in due time. Yes. Well, we are glad. Can we all stand in the sanctuary this morning? And let's just take before we sing or pray a prayer. Let's just worship him in spirit and in truth. Can we give him praise that is due to his name? Can we open our mouths? Can we clap our hands and tell him thank you? Thank you, Lord. For another day that you made. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank for you, opening God. doors I could not see. Thank you. For making a way out of nowhere. Thank you. Loosening my shackles. Thank you. Setting me free. Thank you. I have peace. Perfect peace. I have joy. This joy I have. You didn't give it to me. You can't take it away. Yes, Lord. Yes. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. For this joy. Let's stand as we join in. Amen. Our praise team as they give us, amen, our song and hymn of the morning. Amen. amen. Glory, glory. Ain't that right? Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. chapter John 24th verse tells us they that worship should worship in, in spirit and in truth welcome today to today's services we come to praise the Lord and it's a, a blessing to see your bright shining faces whether I see you or not whether you're online or whether you're here I pray and invoke the spirit of Jesus Christ amongst all of you so that you have opening ears open ears and open eyes to take in this word so you can do better this week. I'm going to try to. Uh, amen. Amen. That's all I got. Uh, bless everybody. <laughs> in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Amen.
remain standing, amen. Again, we are celebrating 120 years of celebrating our Lord, our Christ. I love to call him Christos Kyrios, amen, Christ the Lord, amen. It's one thing for him to be, amen, uh, the savior of your life, but it's a whole nother matter when he is Lord of your life. That means all that you do, amen, Jesus is the nuclei of what you do, amen. And so we thank God for that. And so we're going to ask, amen, that our media team will put up our theme verse for the year. 1 Peter 1 and 8, amen, from the New Revised Standard Version, amen. Let us repeat that all together. One, two, ready, go. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. Amen. But here's the good news. When we see him face to face, what a day. Yes, sir. Of rejoicing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That will be. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Amen. Amen. Our praise team, amen, will give us our song. Amen. Sing, y'all. <laughs>
God. Ooh, I think I got it. has already started. Amen. Thank God. Thank God for Jesus. Amen. We do honor the triune God today for another opportunity for us to come together and worship. Amen. We give God praise. Amen. That God is still on the throne. He's still on the throne. And I don't know why he loved me. I don't know why he cared. I don't know why he sacrificed his life. But I'm so glad that he did. And during this Lent season, my brothers and sisters, it calls us to remember the sacrifice Jesus made for us. did not come down from the cross because he thought about you and I. He thought about future generations. Jesus was looking thousands of years ahead. Yes, he agonized in that garden. Yes, he prayed that prayer, Lord, if it be possible, allow me not to die. together and said nevertheless not my will but may your will be done my brother says I'm just thinking about my sins and I think about all the mess I've done in my life and some more mess I'm going to do in the future but I thank God that there is grace for my mess 
and my wife was at a banquet the other night and the pastor who was preaching was talking about how his son got a young lady pregnant. And he was saying, you know, you don't need to get married just because you got pregnant. But the son said, no, daddy, we want to do the right thing, but we need to save some money. And the father, who is a pastor, allowed his son and the girlfriend to live with them until they got able to get on their feet. Now, some of you who are religious would say he ought to be ashamed of himself, let them shack up. But the pastor said, but I understand grace. I understand grace. I understand because I messed up. He also talked about that his, another son of his, said that he was gay. And, but yet, him and this lesbian woman, they both wanted children. So they decided to make a baby. And he said, well, son, you said you were gay. He said, dad, I'm just confused. There are some confused folk in our world. There are some confused children. There are some confused grown folk. So confused folk even in our churches I know that to be true sometimes I'm confused but thank God for grace no matter what state you find yourself there is grace you ain't got to look at your neighbor just, just think about your life and look at all the mistakes you made and yet God still bless you. Hallelujah. Think about the folk that you gave them a piece of your mind and you cussed them out like you was a sailor. Let me tell you, sailors can cuss because, you know, uh, 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 I live in a town where it won't nothing but sailors. And it's true. When they say you cuss like a sailor, man, I don't know about Brother Greg, but Greg know. Brother Greg, you know about them sailors, where you? <laughs> Amen. But uh, but think about your sin alone, and how God has graced you and has blessed you, and did not hold it against you. We ought to lift our hands right now and tell Him thank you. We ought to tell Him thank you. We ought to tell Him because you know how bad you were. decided, amen, to cast their lot here at the Little Union Baptist Church. One as a full-fledged member and one as a watch care member. Amen. That while he is here, he decided he wanted to be a part of Little Union. Amen. And we thank God for that. Amen. Also, before we do that, I also want to thank God for the grief. Um, uh, 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 it, it, was, it was called the gift of grief. Uh, and it was a, a great presentation that we had. It was a one, and I pray that it helped you. I pray that it set you free. I pray that it, it blessed you. Lord, have mercy. Amen. Yeah. It blessed me. It blessed me. And, 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 the, and, and Dr. Shaw, who, was the, uh, who is a uh, licensed clinical psychologist, 
I mean, she just hit the nail on the head. And so we thank God, amen, for that presentation on yesterday. We give God praise for that. Amen. As uh, soon as it is loaded up to the North Virginia Baptist website, amen, you'll be able to go back and look at it again. And if anyone would like, matter of fact, I'll just send it. I'll just send those, the slide presentation to Sister Sharon, and she will send it to everybody. Amen. And so what a blessing uh, uh, that uh, that presentation was. Amen. And we're looking to have future, a uh, part two. Amen. Because so many uh, ask uh, for a continuation in that. Amen. So many people are grieving. They're not grieving just because of death necessarily. Amen. But grief comes in many different ways. And, and the question is, are you handling your grief correctly? Because again, grief is a gift. It's all right to grieve, but you cannot allow it to overwhelm you and to the point that you, that you separate yourself from everybody and you go into a state of depression. Amen. Amen. That is unhealthy Amen. grief. Amen. So thank God for that. Um, I'm going to ask Sister Lois um, Diggs. Amen. Lois Diggs, if she would come. Amen. And we're going to ask Reverend uh, Beard if he would come as well. Is it Bernard? Robert. Robert. Where did I get Bernard from? Oh. <laughs> there I go again. Senior moments. Amen. Amen. We thank God for them. And uh, we give God praise for these two um, middle-aged people. <laughs> Amen. Sister, Sister Lois Diggs. Uh, Want to have something to say? Because I know you can talk because you stopped in the mall. Oh, I know. I'm just, just so glad to be here and be a, become a member of the church and get involved with the church and community. Thank you. Amen. Amen. She lived right up the street. Amen. Thank the Lord. Amen. Reverend Beard, Robert Beard, there's something you would like to say. Uh, just uh, thank the Lord for uh, you all accepting me and receiving me. And my wife, my son, is actually here today uh, worshiping with us. Amen. My son and my, of course, my mother-in-law. And, of course, your, pastor, your, your new member might be a marshal right there. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He keep coming. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I got my eye on him. Amen. I got my eye on him. Amen. Amen. But we are grateful. We are grateful. And listen, we want to say to you, we are happy that you're here. And listen, if there's anything, amen, that we can do to make your stay even more comfortable. Amen. Um, um, who's uh, Brother Beard's deacon? Deacon Yelder? All right. Deacon Yelder is your deacon? Amen. Who, who, who's um, um, Sister uh, Diggs' deacon? That's right. Deacon Ashby? Who's, um, who's her deaconess? Look right back there. See Sister Jackie? Jackie Banks? Amen. Amen. And who else? And Sister Catherine? Amen. You got all kind of support. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Deacon is bailed as well. All right. Is she here today? All right. Amen. Amen. Listen, may God bless you. May God keep you. If anything we can do. Y'all know my wife, don't you? That's my wife. Yeah, that's my wife right there. My wife. Yeah. Did I say she was my wife? <laughs> Amen. Come on, let's sing. What a fellowship. What a joy divine. Leaning on the everlasting. Our preachers, will y'all come on? Amen. And uh, my brother, is, it can't halfway walk back there, Reverend Fuller. Y'all know he, he is way back there. Amen. God bless you, man, for pressing your way. We love you. We're praying for you. Amen. Leaning on the everlasting What a blessedness Leaning on the everlasting We are leaning Leaning Safe and secure 
secure from all along. We are leaning, we are leaning, leaning on the everlasting arm. We are leaning, we are leaning. Everlasting arm. We are leaning We are leaning Leaning to the From all along We are leaning We are leaning Leaning on The everlasting arm. We are leaning Lean and sing and secure from all along. We are leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arm. Again, let's give them a great big hand. Amen. 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 Any first-time visitors, any first-time visitors, amen. Any first-time visitors, we're going to ask you to stand, amen. Hold up. The usher going to get you a mic. And while we're getting ready to recognize our, our, our um, visitors, I want to say um, that um, trustee, uh, Chairman of Trustee Board wanted me to pass this along to you, all of you to say thank you for your financial support. Amen. All of the AC air conditioning, central air conditioning units are in, and it is 100% paid for. Amen. Amen. This is because of your financial contributions to the church, your tithes and your offering. What a blessing that is. Amen. Thank you so very much. Amen. All right. First time visitors, if you stand. All right. Good morning, church. Good morning. Uh, first, giving honor to God, who is my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, came here with my family, grandmother, mother, and y'all new member, Robert Beard, who was my pastor for 15 years. Um, don't have a church home right now, but I'm just glad to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. God bless you, sir. God bless you. May God keep you. Is there anybody else? It may not be your first time, but you may not have said anything uh, when you came here. Is there anybody else? Anybody else? Amen. God bless you. Amen. Do I see the Garcias back there? Hey, y'all. Good to see y'all. Amen. Let's give them a great big hand. Good to see them. Amen. The Garcias trying to be back incognito back there. <laughs> Good to see y'all. Amen. Good to see all of you today. Amen. Don't forget, my brothers and sisters, that we are continue to fast. Amen. During this uh, Lent season. Amen. And um, I feel so much better already. Now, there's some people. Uh, one pastor uh, who's been in the hospital, good friend of mine, he's been in the hospital, and the doctor has told them to, le to leave red meat alone. Mm. And he told me to leave red meat alone. I said, the doctor told you. He didn't tell me. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, from what I was told in the Bible, Jesus said, everything is clean if we pray for it. Now, we got to do things in moderation, right? Amen. You got to do things in moderation. And so, uh, but, you know, uh, I'm fiending for meat, but thank God I'm doing all right. I'm yet holding on. Amen. Thank God for that. And I, feel, I do feel better. I really do. I really, I really do feel better. Amen. Um, uh, but uh, I'm looking forward to today because, you know, we got the day off. <laughs> and so chicken is calling my name. Amen. Chicken is calling my name. Amen. Amen. Um, my brothers and sisters, uh, don't forget on the um, on Good Friday, Amen. We will have uh, worship here on Good Friday at seven o'clock, Amen. The Reverend Dr. Vernon C. Walton and uh, the good people of the First Baptist Church of Vienna, uh, Virginia, will be our guests, Amen. Their choir and congregation will be with us, and we're looking to have a great time in the Lord. And also um, in April, third week of April, our Spring Revival, Amen. Uh, will be held here uh, and it'll start on Sunday because of COVID. We changed our days because of COVID. 
Um, we actually start our revival that Sunday morning and go into Monday and Tuesday night. And our, of course, our guest preacher would be uh, this great woman of God, Pastor Kim Y. Neal of Newark, Delaware. Amen. What a blessing. What a powerful preacher. Amen. She is. And we're looking forward. Amen. To her coming and sharing with us. Amen. Uh, for our spring revival. Amen. Brothers and sisters, if you will, get your Bibles out. And uh, I have a lengthy, a lengthy uh, text uh, to read. But in order to do that, um, we have to read this to make sure that you have context. Amen. And what we are preaching about today. First Samuel chapter 30. Amen. I'll be reading verses 1 through 25 from the NIV. Amen. 1 Samuel chapter 30, verses 1 through 25. All that can and will and able, if you stand in reverence to the word of God. And it reads like this. And David and his men reached Ziglag on the third day. Now the Amalekites had raided the Negev and Ziklag. And they had attacked Ziklag and burned it. And had taken captive, watch this, the women and everyone else in it, both young and old. They killed none of them, but they carried them off as they went on their way. When David um, said to Abiathar, the priest, the son of Ahimelech, bring me the ephod. Amen. Abiathar brought it to him. Ephod, of course, is, a, is an apron or a cloak, if you will, that they put around their waist, and they used that uh, when they prayed. Amen. And then David said to Abiathar, the son of Amalek, bring me the ephod. Abiathar brought it to him. And David inquired of the Lord, shall I pursue this raiding party? Will I overtake them? The Lord said, pursue them. You will certainly overtake them and succeed in the rescue. That's what the Lord told him. David and the 600 men with him came to uh, the Besor Valley where some stayed behind. Watch this. 200 of them were too exhausted to cross the valley. But David and the other 400 continued the pursuit. They found an Egyptian in a field and brought him to David. They gave him water to drink and food to eat. Part of a cake of pressed figs and two cakes of raisins. He, uh, he ate and was revived. For he had not eaten any food or drunk any water for three days and three nights. David asked him, who do you belong to? Where do you come from? He said, I am an Egyptian, the slave of an Amalekite. My master abandoned me when I became ill three days ago. We raided, he said, we raided the Negev of the uh, Kenethites, some territory belonging to Judah and the Negev of Caleb, and we burned Ziglag. David asked him, can you lead me down to this raiding party? He answered, swear to me before God that you will not kill me or hand me over to my master, and I will take you down to them. He led David down, and there they were, scattered over the countryside, eating, drinking, and uh, uh, reveling because of the great amount of plunder they had taken from the, from the land of the Philistines and from Judah. David fought them from dusk until the evening of the next day. And none of them, watch this, got away except 400 men who rode off on camels and fled. David recovered everything. David recovered everything. David recovered everything that the Amalekites had taken, including, watch this, his two wives. That was legal back then. Amen. Some, somebody said, I wish it was legal now. No, you can't even handle the one you have. <laughs> Nothing was missing. 
young or old, boy or girl, plunder or anything else they had taken. David brought everything back. He took all the flocks and the herds. And his men drove them ahead uh, of the other livestock, saying, This is David's plunder. Then David came to the 200 men who had been uh, too exhausted to follow him and who uh, were left behind at the Besoa Valley. They came out to meet David and the men with him. And David and his men, uh, as David and his, and his men approached, he asked them how they were. But all the evil men and troublemakers always got some of those. Mm -hmm. Among David's followers said, because they did not go out with us, we will not share with them the plunder we discovered. Why well, you want to share with them? They could have been praying for y'all. However, each man may take his wife and children and they can go on home about their business. That's all they wanted to do for them. David replied, no, my brothers. You must not do that what the Lord, uh, you must not do that with what the Lord has given us. He has protected us and, and delivered into our hands the raiding party that came against us. Who will listen to what you say? The share of the man who stayed with the supplies is to be as the same as that of him who went down to battle. All will share alike. Amen. David made this a uh, statute and ordinance for Israel from that day even to this one. Amen. I know that was lengthy, but we needed to read that for, to give good context. We want to use for a subject today, celebrating success. Celebrating success. Amen. Amen. The praise team going to give us another song, and we'll come back with the word of the Lord. Amen.
we don't see him working. Do you not know when Adam and Eve committed the first sin? God got to working right then and there. Come up with a plan to reconcile us back to himself. say amen or not that I will preach under the unction of the Holy Spirit thank you for this time God of pastoring people coming together fellowship one with another thank you God for the songs that have been sung the prayers that have been prayed thank you for the blessings and the, pray and the praise that went up now we ask that your blessings will come down fall upon your people today whatever your people have need of we know you're able to meet it whatever we need we know you're able to supply it for you told us you will not withhold not one good thing from us because you love us and if our earthly father can give us good things how much more Will our Heavenly Father provide the Holy Spirit for us to help us get through life's journey? We thank you and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Such a sweet spirit in this place. Thank God for the praise team who truly has ushered in the presence of God in this place. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. I've been blessed already. Praise God. Celebrating success. Celebrating success. As we find ourselves, brother deacons, in a season of celebration, we have been encouraged to celebrate salvation, celebrate Sunday, Celebrate Shalom, celebrate the sun, celebrate survival, celebrate supplication, celebrate sacrifice, celebrate the sermon and the songs, celebrate selflessness. Last Sunday we talked about celebrating sticking and staying because there are some doors that open that are not necessarily for you to go into. And today we want to talk about celebrating success, celebrating our successes. Over the last 120 years, while there has been ups and downs, the, little, the historic Little Union Baptist Church has experienced many successes. 
bringing hundreds upon hundreds, if not thousands, to salvation in the 120 years. That's a success. Assisting many people in our church family, amen, uh, in the community and outside of the state, amen, to experience a better quality of life through direct financial assistance, I would say that's a success. Helping many families to raise their children and to love the Lord uh, 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 and the Lord's people, I contend that that is a success. Not finishing a year in the red, uh, since I can remember, amen, I consider that a success. Overcoming an unfortunate church split over 20 years ago, that's a success. Teaching men, women, boys, and girls never to be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ and not com uh, compromising this gospel with games and gimmicks. My brothers and sisters, that is a success. Making uh, the shift when it was necessary because of the pandemic to be able to live stream around the world, believe it or not, my brothers and sisters, I consider that to be a success. My brothers and sisters, the truth of the matter is uh, the historic Little Union Baptist Church has known successes. It is not because of one person who's in the sanctuary or uh, in our virtual space, but it is because of the God that we serve who is faithful and just to give us the will to fight on in the midst of adversity. Now, the Little Union Baptist Church is not the only folk, amen, who has experienced success. The reality is that if you are in this room or if you are viewing us online, uh, if you're under the sound of my voice, you too have experienced some level of success. You endured. You've overcome. You have thrived. You have prevailed. You have succeeded. Beating the odds and living to tell your story. My God, that is a success. Living in a land that has denied equality for us uh, who have melanated skin uh, 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 is to live and be black in America and still be alive. I submit to you, that is a success. Let me encourage someone uh, at the outset of this message that uh, you may not be where you want to be. You may not uh, uh, be what God has destined for you to be yet, but you have experienced some level of success. And you have to realize that even small success is success. And it is worthy to be celebrated. Some of you had to choose, amen, this morning. You had to choose which car you was going to drive. Some of you had to choose, amen, which suit, amen, or which dress you were going to wear this morning. Some of you have houses and apartments, a place to lay your head at night. And even if it's not the place you wish it to be, you still have it. Some of you have good paying jobs. And even if it's not the job that you wish, you have a job. Some of you have a loving spouse, and hopefully it's the spouse, amen, that you desired. But even if not, presumably at some point it was, uh, it was, and, and you're still, uh, 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 still trying to work at it together, amen. Uh, that's, a, that's a reason to celebrate success. Because nobody, believe it or not, have perfect marriages. Amen. I get on my wife's nerves. Or oh, uh, uh, should I say I get on my own nerves? So I know I get on my wife's nerves. Amen. She gets sick and tired of me sometimes. I can see it in her body language. <laughs> I ain't looking at her, y'all. I ain't looking at her. <laughs> Amen. You have a loving family that cares for you. And even though uh, we all have to deal with some dysfunction in our families, we are blessed to have who we have. We can consider that a success also. I know you got some crazy cousins and all that, but thank God you still experiencing some success in family. Let me help someone who feel like you have uh, none of the above. Amen. Uh, the fact of the matter is none of that really matters because uh, in and of itself does not indicate success. But the very fact that you are still alive, 
The very fact that um, you have not thrown in the towel, the very fact that by the grace of God, you have a reasonable portion of health and strength. You are still in your right mind, amen, to, a, uh, 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 to the degree that uh, you are... Uh, 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 um, you are, uh, it, it is an indication, should I say, that God has granted and gifted and graced you with success. I really want you to internalize this this Sunday, amen, that if you ever confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, let me tell you, you are successful. If you have faith in God the Father, you are successful. If you believe, amen, you ought to declare it with Holy Ghost conviction and boldness that I am successful. For we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that should bring forth the praises of him who has brought us out of darkness into his marvelous light. For I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. I am the lender and not the borrower. I am a child of the king, my God. Amen. I am set apart. Therefore, I am successful. I assure you that I'm not trying to get a cheap shout here this morning. But I truly want to encourage someone today that despite what you're going through and because of who you are uh, uh, going and because of who's going through it with you, you are successful. You will succeed. And because you know the end from the beginning, because uh, we know that uh, uh, the suffering of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us by faith prophetically. And ultimately, you are and you will be a success. It was Bill Gates who declared uh, uh, it's fine to celebrate success. But it's more important to heed the lessons of failure. As we peruse this text this morning, this particular pericope, we find, amen, the principles that is textually crystallized for us. If you're going to, amen, celebrate success, first of all, you have to recognize, watch this, the source of your success. Amen, somebody. You didn't become successful on your own. You do know that, don't you? The text begins by declaring David, who was not yet king of Israel, makes his way back to Ziglag, a, town, a township in southern Judea. And when he arrives, he is uh, uh, with his fighting men, having just prevailed in battle. He found that the town had been burned to ashes. It uh, had been plundered, and all the women and children, including David's two wives, have been kidnapped and taken captive by the Amalekites. Amen. It's one thing for you to take my stuff, yeah, well. but it's a whole nother matter when you kidnap my kids and my wife. Right. Oh, we got problems then. Am I right about it? Yes, sir. The Bible says that David was in distress. David was in despair. David was despondent. Uh, the man wept, y'all. Uh, imagine this. David has uh, turned uh, uh, to his place, returned to his place of abode, and have found that life as he knew it was no more. He returned to Ziklag to find that life as he knew it has been turned upside down. Ziklag had been looted and set ablaze and all the women and children, even David's two wives, have been abducted and taken into exile. Ain't no telling what they're going to do to those women and children. And the Bible says that David was greatly distressed and was in great danger because the men spoke, his own men now, spoke of stoning him. <laughs> you know, you, you in charge, David. So if you, so, 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 so look, if you're going to get the praise of being successful, you're going to get, you're going you're gonna to be blamed for the bad that happened too. Amen. And so those men spoke of stoning him. 
David was in a bad place, surrounded by bitter people, amen. And when life as you know it becomes disrupted, amen, you uh, 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 can become disoriented and go into a state of depression. With what has been, amen, your norm has become upset and you can, uh, uh, you can uh, become down in the dumps feeling despair and despondent. When you find yourself in that place and God forbid that your place is compounded with people blaming their situation on you. Have you ever been there? In a place of great despair? I know I have. In a place where you felt like, amen, life as you know it has been snatched from you overnight. Have you ever had to wrestle and toil with the fact that what was your routine and your regiment and your regular reality was ripped from you and you found yourself in great despair? I'm sure I have some witnesses in here and out there, amen, uh, that, uh, that you found yourself in a place in life where life uh, uh, radically shifted on you. It altered at the drop of a dime and that can become disorienting and that can become dis, uh, uh, debilitating and, and, and that can cause great despair or a state of deep, dark depression. Here we have David. He's in great despair. And the Bible says that uh, as a consequence, he, he, he encourages himself in the Lord and inquires of the Lord. In order to grasp the totality uh, of that which takes place in 1 Samuel 30, you have to uh, do some, uh, you have to have some knowledge of the preceding chapters. You see, Saul was king and had been at odds with David. Saul had it out for David because he was jealous of David. People were singing a song that Saul killed his thousands, but David has killed his tens of thousands. Yes, sir. Oh, that'll make some haterade. Amen. That, that'll, that'll make some folk want to drink some haterade, if you will. Amen. David, at one point, inquires of the priest, Abiathar, to bring him the ephod. Amen. When, when, when they wanted to pray, amen, they would bring, bring that prayer shawl, if you will, and uh, uh, an apron-like garment worn when making inquiries of the Lord. And uh, the priest inquired of the Lord on his behalf. When Saul found out that the priest, watched this, assisted David uh, a while back, uh, um, amen, guess what? He got upset. Amen, because he felt that the priest had, had committed treason. Yeah. Amen. And so Saul, uh, guess what he did? He got so mad, amen, he ordered that 85 priests, amen, be put to death, but only one escaped, and his name was Abiathar, yes, the son of Ahimelech. Amen. Fast forward to 28, Paul finds himself with his back against, uh, David, Saul finds himself with his back against the wall and um, uh, 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 a Philistine army ready to make war against him. And while Saul would um, traditionally go and get the priest to seek wise counsel, he does not have that option available to him because he didn't kill them all. He does not have it at his disposal. Instead, guess what he does? He seeks traditional inquiries, and they are, watch this, dreams, casting lots, urims. In other words, there were some certain stones, and they would throw them like dice. And then he would ultimately seek the witch doctor, the fortune teller. And the Bible says, watch this, that the Lord was silent unto Saul. In other words, God is not, uh, uh, Saul is inquiring of God, but God ain't talking back to Saul. Here it is, Saul is in trouble. He is not sure what to do. And so the pseudo-spiritual Saul seeks out some substitutes in an effort to speak to the sovereign, and he has literally, uh, God has literally cut off his access. Lord, have mercy. In a moment of pride and ego, Saul, discontent with the direction of the priest, slaughters them in chapter 22 and then finding himself needing them in chapter 28. 
Maybe this is a cautionary tale, amen, to those who have found themselves, amen, on the outs of the church. Or on the outs with the church, as I say, you got mad because you got your feelings hurt in the church. For those, amen, who like to bad mouth the church, amen. People get hurt on their job. Feelings get they 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 get hurt on their job all the time. Didn't get the promotion, and you really should have got it. But guess what? You still show up on Monday morning. But oh, don't get hurt by the church. You ready to join somebody else's church? Amen. Folks speak ill of religious institutions when they get hurt, amen, who uh, they engage in character assassination and, uh, against the men and women of God. But, when, uh, but, 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 but then when your uh, uh, loved one passes, the same one that talk trash about the church, amen, when your loved one passes, they ain't a member of nobody church. When you can't pay your bills, and you need a character letter to the judge or for a new job, you come back running to the church. The Bible says that Saul, with his pseudo-spiritual self, seeks substitutes and relies on ritualistic reassurance because he had, uh, uh, he had uh, cut off his access to the primary means and methods of contact with the master. And the Lord was silent. Fast forward to our text in chapter 3. Here we see David finds himself in great distress, just as Saul uh, found himself in great distress. And here David encourages himself in the Lord. Amen. I like that word encourage. It means he strengthened himself. He repairs himself. He gets himself together. My favorite one is, watch this, he overpowers himself. Wow. It literally suggests that there are times, amen, when you have to allow the self with some sense, amen, to take over the helm from the self uh, that is ready to throw in the towel. And the sensible self has to say to the silly self, let me say that again, the sensible self has to say to the silly self, get yourself together. Remember who you are. Remember who you are. Remember who brought you through. Remember who kept you from danger seen and unseen. Remember the source of your success who is always the source of your strength. And so David encourages himself. David calls on the priest, and the priest is none other than the one who had managed to miss being massacred by the hands of Saul's men, the son of Ahimelech, Abiathar. Ahimelech, his daddy, was one of the prophets who was killed, but Abiathar was able to escape. The one who has survived attempted murder, David says to him to go get the ephod. The ephod is a priestly garment. Uh, uh, none was left in the company of Saul because, again, he had killed all the men that had warned them, save the one who escaped. So Abiathar gives it, amen, gives it to him, amen. And thereafter, the text says, David inquires of the Lord. I can appreciate the prayer David prayed for a couple of reasons. Here is a couple of reasons, amen. The whole prayer is this. Shall I pursue them? And shall I pursue them? Will I overtake them? That's it, my brothers and sisters. Shall I pursue them? Will I overtake them? Yeah. There was no to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I'm glad that my bed was not my cooling board. Well. I want to thank you, Lord, that the blood is running warm through my veins. Well. Thank you that you allowed my golden moments to roll on a little while longer. None of that. I'm thankful yeah. for this prayer because this is a real prayer. Uh, uh, he, he get away he, 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 he push away all the preliminary stuff it's not full of pretense or posturing David is exercising amen, experiencing should I say a, uh, an urgent dilemma and consequently he does not have time to play around he has to get to the root of the issue he got right to the point it's a real prayer but secondly I like this prayer because it's a risky prayer Shall I pursue them? Will I overtake them? 
What would happen if God says, yes, go after them? But I want you to know, David, that you will lose what you gained. Lord, have mercy. I don't know uh, uh, what would have happened if the Lord would have responded by instructing David that he can't pursue. But the outcome would not have been favorable. But David's prayer uh, risked uh, uh, the hard response. Amen. David had enough sense to pray a prayer that was risky and real. And the Lord's response was, pursue them and you will overtake them. You will succeed, he said, in the rescue. That's in verse 8. Verse 9, David and 600 men came to the Besor River, I mean valley, and um, uh, 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 the valley was 12 miles south of Ziglag. The text speaks of the urgency in which David uh, responds to the word of God. In verse 8, they were in Ziglag. In verse 9, they are in the Besor Valley, amen, which is 12 miles south. David does not wait for confirmation or a sign, amen, whether they are ready uh, to keep going after the three-day journey in which they have already engaged in, but he hears a word from God, and he walks on a word. I would not know, uh, I, I, don't, I don't know about you, but, 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 but watch this. The next time I hear a word from God, amen, amen. Uh, look, I'm just going to step out and do what he says. Amen. Many of us got to wait for a sign. We got to quit waiting for a sign because we'll end up missing our blessing waiting for a sign when God already told you to pursue and you will rescue and have success. David walks on the word. Amen. And when he gets to this valley, he finds uh, that, uh, that one third of his men are too tired and were exhausted to continue. He has 600 men with him. And 200 of them cannot push any further. It wasn't that they were cowards. It was that they was exhausted. Amen. They camp out while the remaining 400 men continued their pursuit. Watch this. Then, it, then, uh, uh, then we get to verse 11. And they come uh, uh, across an Egyptian who is weary and ill. They found out that his master was a member of the raiding Amalekite party. Yeah. And the master has deserted him yeah. when he uh, became ill three days prior. Mm. The man makes a deal with David yes, that he would show him where the Amalekites were if David would spare his life. Okay. When I read this with fresh eyes, uh, this is what this text says to me. Be careful of how you treat people. Listen, I know uh, uh, it is uh, often popular to say that everyone won't make it uh, 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 to your final destination and that sometimes you got to get rid of some folk in your life. And, yeah, we, we shout hallelujah on that, don't we? Yeah. But uh, as a matter of fact, it can, it can uh, be easy for someone to shout when you hear the preacher say you need to get rid of some folk in your life. Am I right? Uh, uh, when you have grown weary of dealing with those uh, uh, same trifling kinfolk yes, over and over and over again well. you want to be done with them don't you when you become sick and tired of those same fickle friends and, and funny acting folk and your people uh, 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 or your people uh, who you seem to always uh, look 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 need more they want more from you than they can give themselves Sometimes you can't wait to hear the preacher say that you have to get rid of some uh, uh, excess baggage in your life. Sometimes uh, all of that is true. But today teaches us that there are some, there are also times, amen, uh, where it is uh, in your best interest to carry some folk until they are restored unless, amen, unless uh, you contribute to your own demise as a consequence of your dismissal. And your discarding of those who are going through difficult times, yes, sir. who can't care for themselves now, but they still need you to care for them. What am I saying? I'm glad you asked. Uh, 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 I'm not saying that you need to submit to abuse and toxic relationships. I'm not saying that. All I'm saying is sometimes you cannot take the easy way out. Yes, 
And it behooves you, amen, to help some folk who cannot help themselves in the moment. And stick with some folk who cannot support you in the moment. And provide for some folk who cannot provide for you in the moment. Amen. Uh, uh, you may have some crazy cousins. Amen. You may have some, uh, 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 you may have to stick with some silly sisters. Amen. You may have to bear the burden of some bedridden brothers. Lord, have mercy. Uh, yes, uh, it may require you more time and energy, but it may be ultimately in your best interest and in the best interest of all parties involved because you never know when God will restore. And all I'm trying to say is uh, don't be so swift to excommunicate those who find themselves in a season when they need more from you than they can give you themselves. Because you never know when God will restore them and work all things together for you all's good. While God, uh, uh, without a shadow of a doubt, is the main source of our success, amen, you never know what a strange subsidiary source God will select to secure your success. So be careful how you, how you treat people. David has compassion with this Egyptian uh, uh, whose master has uh, discarded him at uh, the first sign that he could not uh, attend to his needs as he always has. And the mistreated man leads David to his men to the, and his men to the camp of, ra of the raiding party where their wives and children are being held captive. And if you're going to celebrate success, my brother and sister, text, the text is telling also to teach us uh, uh, that you have to realize, watch this, that it requires some struggle. If you're going to be successful, it requires some struggle. This is not some glad to glory story. In this life, you will have tribulation. That's right. Who said that? That's, That's in red. That's in other words, Jesus said that, right? But the rest of the passage also says, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Look at the text in verse 17. David found them, uh, uh, fought them from dusk until evening the next day. That's more than 24 hours. None of them got away except 400 men who fled on camel. David was, uh, uh, had recovered everything the Amalekites had taken, including his two wives. Nothing was missing, boy or girl, young or old, plunder or anything else. They brought everything back. And as they're coming back, the men that are with him says, this is David's plunder. Let me be clear. I love uh, the story that God shows up and, and manufactures uh, 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 a, 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 a great uh, story. Amen. The men of war. Amen. Listen, uh, God can God won wars with the children of Israel without weapons. And solely through worship. Remember how they captured Jericho? That's right. They didn't use not one weapon. Right. So we can't put God in a box. God can get you, uh, cause you to win a weapon, one, uh, win, a, win a war one way, and, and then the next time he'll say, get your guns, get your, get your stuff, get your swords and spears, right? Can't put God in a box. God says, uh, 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 David, in order for you to get the victory and to obtain success, you have to pursue and you have to go after it. You just can't stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, amen, in this particular occurrence. Right. You have to get to stepping, and when you get there, you have to work, not just clock in, but you have to put in time and effort and grind it out. There are times when you have to fight to get what the enemy has stolen from you. Imagine how hard David had to fight. The text says none of them escaped except 400 men on camel. That's the same number of the total fighters that David had. Am I right? Yeah. So he went into the battle outnumbered. First of all, uh, 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 on, on the face of it, one would contend that the odds were not in his favor. But he still fought. Yeah. My brothers and sisters, there will be times when your success will require you to fight for it. Am I right about it? Amen. 
Yes, it's been promised to you by God, amen, but the promise is contingent upon you doing your part to work it out and make it happen and go after it and strive for it and struggle and strain until what's been promised has been possessed. You may, you may have to fight for your marriage in order for it to be a success. You may have to fight for your family to stay together. You may have to fight in order for your business to succeed. You may have to fight to achieve what God has promised. And the question is, how bad do you want it? Man, the reason why some of us ought to be uh, intentional about celebrating our success because uh, uh, you know it wasn't easy, but you made it. Am I right about it? So let me hasten on here. And so Ralph Emerson, Ralph Waldo Emerson wrote, he said, what is success? To laugh often and much, to win the respect of intelligent people and the afflictions of children, or sorry, and the affections of children to earn the appreciation of honest critics and endure the portrayal of false friends, to appreciate the beauty, to find the best in others, to leave the world a bit better, whether by a healthy child or a garden patch or a uh, redeemed social condition, amen, to know, to know even one life has breathed easier because you lived. This is to be successful. If no one is made better by your success, then you have uh, experienced no success at all. Success is accompanied by sacrifice, amen, to ensure the success of someone else. It can help someone, uh, 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 as the song says, if I can help someone as I travel along, if I can cheer somebody with the word of song, if I can show someone that they're traveling wrong, amen, amen, guess what? You will be successful and your living shall not be in vain. Can we celebrate success realizing that it requires it requires social responsibility as well? Because when you look back over your life, you can testify that you are the beneficiary of someone else's success. Amen. Someone else's sacrifice. And as a matter of fact, we can celebrate success and the sacrifice that accompanies it because watch this on one Friday. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus went to Calvary to save a wretch like you and me. You know what they did? They hung him high. They stretched him wide. He hung his head, and for me, he died. But oh, I'm so glad. That that's not how the story ends. I know that's, I'm supposed to save that for Easter. I know I'm supposed to save that for Easter. But I get happy when I think about what Jesus done for me. Because three days later, he rose again. And with that success, he secured victory over death, hell, and the grave. And I wonder, can anybody thank God? Can you thank God for Jesus? who secured our success. Can you thank God for your successes? Can you thank God that when you realize that he is the source of your success? Can you thank God that you realize that even though some success may require some struggle, you can also thank God that it also requires some social responsibility because the men that were with David they wanted not to give some plunder to the 200 men that stayed behind but David said oh no we have a social responsibility because if you live in this capitalistic country and this capitalistic world you will find that the rich get richer 
and the poor get poorer. Matter of fact, there's some folk in Congress right now want to mess with your social security and which you paid into. They want to raise the age to 70. Who knows we gonna reach that age. I want my money as soon as I can get it. But oh, somebody ought to thank God for social responsibility because you didn't get where you are all by yourself. Somebody thought about you and bless you, amen. So I want to thank God today that Jesus looked out for me. He claimed social responsibility. He said I would come down. I could tell leaders of angels to help me come down from this cross. But I got social responsibility. I got to help my brother. I got to help my sister. I got to save them from their sin. And so I'm going to be up on the cross. I'm going to carry my cross. I might stumble and I might fall. But as he was stumbling and as he fell, he thought about you and I. And he kept on up Golgotha's hill. Yeah, they put spikes in his hand. They put spikes in his feet. They put a crown of thorns on his head. And the Bible says, and the blood came streaming down. Yeah, he said, I thirst. And they gave him a sponge with vinegar. Lord, have mercy. And then he hung his head and he died. They took him down, yeah, from the cross and put him in a borrowed tomb. They sealed that tomb and couldn't nobody open it. Yeah, I'm so glad, I'm so glad. That's not how the story ends. Three days later, he rose again. Aren't you glad he rose? He rose so I can have joy. Joy, unspeakable joy, full of glory. He rose that I can have peace. God's perfect peace. He rose, I could have contentment. Whatever this way I find myself, I can be content. He rose, yeah, that I can be whole. He rose, yes he did. I can recover my family. He rose so that I could have a testimony. I'm saved by his power divine. I'm slave through new life sublime. Life is now sweet and my joy is complete because I'm saved. And even though I have to fight for it, I don't have to wait till the battle is over. I can shout right now. Anybody? Can you shout right now? I don't see him working. I don't see his hand. But I can shout right now. By faith, God will work it out. By faith, he will make a way out of no way. By faith, I'm healed. By faith, I shall. Cover all, and he all right. Don't you know him? Have you tried him? And he all right? Say yeah, yeah. I know he's all right. Hallelujah. Celebrate success. You might not have what you want, but thank God you have what you need. That's a success. You turned your water on this morning. Water was coming through the spigot. There's somebody who don't have running water. Amen. There's somebody 
when you flicked on your lights this morning, they came on when you didn't even think about it. But there's somebody who don't have lights this morning. As we ride through 95, sometimes as we come down the Absco Road, we can see tents back there in the trees. Some misfortune, something happened. Nobody in their right mind want to live in the woods. But something unfortunately happened. And it could be all of us. But by the grace of God, he's blessed us. as we come to one of the most sacred ordinances of the church that is to partake in Holy Communion 
Jesus says, as often as you do this, you show appreciation for what I've done for you. And when I think about communion, which is always, third son is always my favorite son. I seriously think about my sins and how Jesus washed me, forgave me. He became the perpetuation. He became the scapegoat, if you will. And what I love about the Lord is he never throws my sins in my face. Has God ever threw your sins in your face? Has God ever reminded you how bad you were? Not one time. Because he take your sins once you're forgiven. And he take those sins and he ball them up in his hand. And he throws them into the sea of forgetfulness. Never to bring it up again. That's love. That's love. Therefore there is now no condemnation to those. who walk out through the spirit. Hallelujah. Going to ask Reverend Johnson if he would join me. Amen. At the table. Hallelujah. 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 anyone who desired to partake in Holy Communion but you have not been served, would you raise your hand and the deacon will come and serve you? Is there one? Yes. Is there one? All right. We're good. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Listen. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our secret sins, our iniquities. He was chastised. He was beaten for us. Chastisement of our peace. He took beating so that we could have peace. Chastisement of our peace was upon him. And because all of those lashes that he took, we have the possibility of being healed. Amen. I'm going to ask, amen, Reverend Lamar Johnson, if he would pray over these elements that when we take them, that God will transform them so that whatever ails you in your body, in your mind, in your soul, in your spirit, you would be made whole 100% on this day. Amen. Our Father, my God, we thank you for this opportunity to come before this table, Lord. Lord, as we come, we thank you for the blood that cleanses every sin and every iniquity, Lord. Lord, we know we've done some things we should not have done and did not do some things that we should have done. But we thank you, Lord, for the blood. We thank you, Lord, for grace. We thank you for mercy, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for cleansing as we come to this table. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to recommit ourselves and rededicate ourselves to you. We thank you, Lord, for dying for us, for shedding your blood. We might be forgiven, that we might have eternal life. As we come before this table, Lord, we just pray for these elements, this bread, and this wine, that you would bless it, sanctify it for your glory and your use, Lord. As we partake of it, you might be glorified. We give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. We thank you for these things. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. On that night, my brothers and sisters, Jesus met with his disciples. He 
He said, gentlemen, I want you to know that this will be the last time I will eat with you in this manner. But I want to let you know that this bread that you're about to eat, this represents my broken, bruised body. It was broken for you. That's why I say to you, break it and eat ye all of it. Meditate on his broken body. Thank you, God. And then, like manner, he took the cup. He said, This cup represents a new covenant. Because once I die and once I'm raised on the third day, you don't have to worry about keeping the law of Moses anymore. That's been done away with. But now two things all you have to do in the new covenant is love the Lord God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And then love your neighbor as you love yourself. This blood represents the new cup, the new covenant, the blood that was shared for you. This blood reaches the highest mountain. This blood flows through the lowest valley. The blood that will give you strength. It will never lose its power. May we all drink together. Can we just thank God for his sacrifice for us? Can we thank him for his sacrifice? Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for your sacrifice. May we all stand. Don't forget to join us tomorrow, 7 at 7. And also, we'll be on Facebook Live Monday through Friday. Amen. Giving a devotional. You may join us live or tune in later on in the day and view it whenever you like. Thank God, Lord. Thank God that God has blessed us. Good to see all of you out on today. We pray God's blessing upon you. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise Savior be glory, majesty, dominion, and power. We all say amen. 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 And amen. God bless you. Have a great week. We love you in Jesus' name. Have a great week. Amen.